Welcome to beautiful, sunny Valencia, Spain, and the brand new Aventador S. How do you make one of the most brutal supercars on the road even better? Well, you add more power, of course, but that is just the beginning. The new Aventador S brings some subtle styling changes to the front, including a new nose meant to evoke the head of a snake and a new lightweight triple tip exhaust system out back. The 6.5 liter V12 is up 40 horsepower for a whopping 740 horsepower total, and the car now has a full four wheel steering system, making the Aventador S both more nimble and more stable. And it's remarkable actually how easy this car is to drive, despite the fact that we are talking again well over 700 horsepower. At the limit, there's still a tendency toward understeer, which is pretty common in the Aventadors we've found in the past but that rear steering really makes it feel much more responsive and the initial turn in is very, very sharp. That's helped by variable steering, which is actually changing its ratio depending upon how sharp you're turning the wheel. That I know is something that a Lamborghini Purist will probably not be in favor of exactly, but it actually does make this car feel a fair bit more responsive than it would otherwise. talking point it's still that motor though that v12 sounds so so good oh love it absolutely love it if there's something though that needs changing on the aventador it's the transmission. They have retweaked it and retuned it a little bit to make it a bit smoother than before. But this is still the same single clutch transmission that the Aventador has had since the beginning. And so it's still that same kick in the pants when you get on the throttle and grab another gear. Ugh. And that's a little bit of character. It's a little bit of charm, but it's a little bit too brutal. And out here on the track, actually, it means you've got some unwanted weight transfer. If you grab another gear in the middle of a corner, you better hang on tight. Lamborghini, I think it's time to put a dual clutch transmission to one of these, and frankly, I think it's time for me to get off the track and hit the road. On the road, that transmission just gets worse. You expect some brutality in a launch like that, of course, but it's when pulling away from a light or a stop sign that things are still really bad, the car lurching and bucking with every shift. I recommend selecting passengers with strong stomachs. Another area that hasn't improved is the infotainment system. I know this is a Lamborghini and quality navigation is probably not high on your list of wants, but it is still disappointing to see that same basic interface the car launched with over five years ago, and it was old even then. It does at least gain Apple CarPlay in this iteration. Really though, the big change here on the road is still the handling dynamics. Even at the sorts of speeds that won't result in you spending a night or two in Spanish prison, you can definitely appreciate the improvement that rear steer system brings to the table. It's pretty remarkable how much this car has changed with just the addition of that rear steering system. Out there on the track and even on the street, you can definitely tell the difference. But even more important is how much it hasn't changed. It's still big, it's still brutal, frankly it's still a little bit intimidating, but I still love it.